This episode of Nobody's Listening is brought to you in part by Bluehost Hosting, where you could get unlimited space, unlimited hosting, unlimited bandwidth. It's the host we use here at Nobody's Listening. Check it out today, nlcast.com slash bluehost. Also brought to you by listeners Tamara Selleck, Anna Silva, Drew Covert, and Jean Ouz. I got a bad feeling about this. No! to Nobody's Listening, where we tell funny life stories and invite you to do the same. Hey, how you doing out there, podcast people? This is Nobody's Listening, the show where we tell funny life stories. Yours and ours, it is episode 187, brought to you the week of December, yeah, right, uh, <laughs> January 3rd, 2012. I'm your host, my name is James, and with me is John. I sit on a exercise ball Steinklobber to do the show, Steinklobber. How you doing, John? Don't judge me. It's okay. I, I do sit on an exercise ball it's all right. to do the show and do everything else. I take a shower on the exercise ball. Mm-hmm. Does it? How do you poop? On the exercise ball. <laughs> <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't even pause. You didn't even have to think about it. It just came out naturally. I yeah, mean, just like the exercise stuff. wall. <laughs> An exercise dumping machine. Yeah, like a ball that has a little opening. <laughs> Little sack awesome. within it. I don't mm. know if you could get a, a to empty it. You stomp on it. <laughs> <laughs> Throw it away. Just a poo launcher. <laughs> well, Nasty. John, um, whatever you say, Ethan apparently can make it even better and worse um, at the same time. <laughs> this is uh, Ethan Nicole. I'm streaming live uh, drawings. Uh, Nicole, so welcome back to the show as well, <laughs> Ethan. That's, hey, that's my middle name. How did I Whoa. know? I knew it. That's one of, that's one of the Jackson brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Streaming on Yeah, somebody brought you, uh, somebody emailed today a suggestion for uh, an opening song, and I'll mention his name later. But he, he said James, John, and the guy with a girl's name. And, oh, and it took, it took yeah. me a minute to figure out what he's talking about. And I was like, oh, Ethan Nicole. Nicole and that's yeah, why I've Nicole. decided your middle name is Chelsea. <laughs> it's just, See, I think it's worse. My, my middle name, I'm going to say it right now, my middle name is Jermaine. Oh, that's Jermaine? Dude, that gives you some cred somehow. Yeah, they, they, nah, somehow. So, I, I don't know. <laughs> what's the, the English translation? The English translation? What yes, do you, mean? So you said it's Jermaine. Uh, 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 Are you sorry. super squeaky? <laughs> yes. Yeah. So anyway, we always That's start this gorgeous. show off with a um, a little bit of a, of music, and this was suggested to us by um, the Dunkin' Donut. I'm I'm sorry, the uh, the ramen noodle. Okay. It's for John specifically, <laughs> so enjoy. Mom made beans for dinner. No, I ate them all. Say, come get your coat on. Going to the mall, gonna visit like Santa, sit upon his knee. But all that I could think about was how not to cut the cheese. Waiting oh, yeah. for Santa, thought that I'd explode. The gas <laughs> grew bigger. Every ho ho ho. I tried my best to hide it, that I was doing swell. But when I sat down on Santa's lap, he hollered, What's that smell? <laughs> <laughs> He said fart. I asked him for a baseball. I asked him for a bat. I asked him for some ice skates, but I'll get none of that. I asked him for a lot of things I'll have to do without. So when I sat down on Santa's lap, I let one slip out. <laughs> said farted. <laughs> All of them did. Christmas Eve, I snuck out of my bed without a sound. I went down to the living room just to take a look around. It was then that I saw Santa next to the Christmas tree. His arms were full of presents, and they were all for me. Put Aww. them on a pile, got up to turn around, and blew a fart with such great force, a tree almost came down. <laughs> <laughs> Old Saint Nick 
this one now and then. I started on Santa. Oh, boy. It's my new favorite song. <laughs> I figured. <laughs> yeah, Christmas, cla- Christmas classic. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, <laughs> I Fart on Santa's Lap, Christmas video from 2007 with 446,009 views. Make that 10. Uh, 600 likes, 77 dislikes from the ramen noodle. <laughs> so, thanks. That's funny because he doesn't like the fart word. Really? Well, yeah. He sent it for you. The what a good word. guy. What is the fart word? The one that starts with an F and ends with art. Okay. <laughs> it is an art form <laughs> for John. It is. So, uh, <laughs> it's so embarrassing. Let's, uh, let's do one of these. That's Weekly. You shut your mouth. Oh, okay, we can do that. <laughs> update weekly update um before we get into real weekly weekly updates since this is our unofficial after christmas show since we didn't get to do a christmas show i want to go around the table and find out what everybody got for christmas starting with uh drawing boy ethan what'd you get for christmas dude mm-hmm. uh, or, or xmas if you prefer i mean my favorite present is probably the one i got for myself <laughs> it's always the best this, one this computer I'm, I'm using right now i got a new computer awesome so, uh, yeah, that's my favorite. I got some new socks, too, but... <laughs> it's just not holding up to the computer, is not it? Quite. It's just not the same. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, a computer and socks? Uh, I got a Kindle. That was cool. My brother got me a Kindle. Uh, Kindle Fire? Kindle Fire? No, it's oh. a Kindle Touch Kindle Suck. Mm. I have an iPad, so I don't... That's true. You don't need you a Kindle Fire. Everything. I don't need another shiny screen thing. Nope. <laughs> John, what'd you get besides uh hairpiece? Oh. Ow. You can tell. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um actually this was a, a pretty good Christmas, um, to my surprise. I uh I put out a few hints to my wife that I'd like to get some Legos, believe it or not. No way. Yeah. I don't know why. I just had this real I didn't really have them as a kid, so mm. I had this fixation on getting Legos. So well, they don't have the me. ones that we had as kids. Now they're all complicated, but go ahead. Oh, they're awesome. Yeah, they are. And they're not simple anymore, but these, these are pretty cool. I got a couple from the uh, Winter Village set, and uh, that was awesome. And I got, I got a remote control helicopter that you can control with your, your uh, iPod. Mm. It, you want to see it? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the Hilo. It's made by Griffin. Uh huh. See, it's cool. Wow. And I got that. It's pretty. It's got a little device that you hook up to your iPod and or your iPad. Doesn't work Whoa. on Android. And I got a 360. Well, we, the family, got a 360. Sweet. Finally, Let's welcome. Connect. Welcome to the world. Thank you. You have to friend me. I will. Except, you know, the dumb thing about it is you have to pay if you want to use Netflix. Yeah, that is very That's dumb. Dumb. You need to straighten up Microsoft. You don't need more money. That's true. <laughs> well, uh, uh, I got a 360 as well. Um, uh, did, one of did the, you? the yeah, because my old one died. The one I bought off oh. my brother a while back. So yeah, uh, so yeah, I got a new one and I uh, got a good deal on it too. It came with a couple games and and uh, I got uh, was it Star Wars the the I don't even the complete saga here. Oh yeah, on Blu-ray yeah. It was a favorite. I got a new uh, chair. Okay. I got a new chair. So, my my friend drew that. Just so you know. No way. The co- the cover of the uh, yeah. This the Blu-ray. Oh. Uh, Cliff Crampy painted all those. Really. He's uh he's my pipe really? smoking pipe smoking buddy. He's good friends with me and Doug. Tech gummy him. Cool beans. I need to send this to you and have him sign it, but uh, <laughs> mail it to you. It costs seventy dollars to get it back and forth. He did. I don't know if you guys saw on my Facebook. There's a painting of. Me and Doug and a bunch of our friends uh, and yeah, GK Chesterton, Chesterton together. Chesterton Club. Yeah. yeah, he painted. He painted that. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> did he paint it with like paint, paint, or did he? It's all digital. Well, those are digital too. That blue cool. cover. Yeah, I got some other cool. presents. Um, <laughs> Merry <laughs> Christmas, <laughs> you dumb friend. Um, no, I uh, I got. Uh, <laughs> 
I got some Steam games, you know, Dead Island, and um, I got I got uh, uh, Batman Arkham City, so I can't wait <gasps> to dig into that. I got it too. Yay! For PS3 or Xbox? Uh, I got it for PS3. So did I. All right. That's funny. Dude. That's like one. I, my roommate had that, and I've been playing it like crazy. Is it I really be, good? I beat it already. Because the first Arkham's one was fun. Good. It's fun to beat people up in it. Yeah. Oh, it is. I never played the first one, so I just... Uh... Yeah, the fighting was very fluid in the first one, where you could you could be the one guy fighting 40 ninjas, you know, and just flow through. Yeah, they, and they got that. The only thing I don't like is the night where you dodge knives. Have you ever, I don't know if they have that in the no, first one. No, like, they don't. You do this annoying thing where if a guy has a knife, then you, like, hold down, like, this back button, and, like, everybody in the fight, like, stops and just watches as you dodge, like, three knife swings. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a, I'm not a fan of that. But other than that, seen that. Awesome. weird. Anyway, it it's cool. uh, it was good Christmas, man. Gotta say, we had a great time. I, I got my wife a, a, a Kindle uh, Flame or Fire or whatever it was, and uh, <laughs> nice. she's she has not put it down since. Like I'm really concerned. <laughs> so she treats nice. she treats it like John does that exercise ball. She just she carries it around everywhere and probably poops on it too. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Wait. Oh. Oh, but do uh, that. so anyway, that my real weekly update is um, that I did something really, 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 really stupid today. Very stupid. Uh-oh. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I I was on Facebook, and I had start. I've started a new podcast that I'll talk about in a minute. And I so I set up a fan page, you know, a like page, and I wanted people to uh, like this new thing, and it said invite people to like your dumb, stupid new fan page. And so I'm like, okay, cool. And it says import, you know, import your contacts. And I'm like, oh, that sounds like a great idea. And I think (laughs) I I just want to preface this by saying Facebook allowed me to do all of this evil stuff that I did. (laughs) Um, (laughs) For for, (laughs) you're drawing somebody pooping on a candle fire. That's awesome. Um, (laughs) What? It's an exercise ball. No, oh, oh exercise okay. Ball. Okay, I got it. Uh, Reading a Kindle Fire. Yeah. yeah. No, that's old. But uh, no, I, I import all my contacts from James at NLCast.com. You know, I'm just like, I'm going to invite people that know me and know the show to like my page. Long story short, I send about 2,500 uh, invitations for people to friend me personally on Facebook. <laughs> Facebook. <laughs> yes. 2,500. Okay. Wow. 2,500. And I get back and sh- if Facebook has logged me off my account, I log in. It says, you've been accused of being a spammer and this, that, and the other, <laughs> and you are terrible. And you've done bad things, and you should read this. And it made me read the conditions and terms of the friend agreement and all this stuff. And and um, I, I I kid you not, I I agreed to all that. It says, do you want to cancel the one thousand remaining requests? I'm like, heck yes. <laughs> yes. I didn't know I had even done this. I had Whoa. over one hundred new friends in a matter of an hour. Okay, Whoa. that that re- requ- that said yes. I had about fifteen people. That 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 actually, you know, like check the back of your credit card. They they said, uh, "Do I know you?" And I had this <laughs> I had this stock reply that I had to send to everybody that basically says, um, "I'm an idiot. I did it on accident." And then and then there were people that didn't want to hear that. I don't know who's who, but they're like, "Oh, I thought you friended me on purpose, and now I'm depressed and gonna kill myself." And I'm like, "No, I did. I did. I loved you, and I know you. I know every one of you listeners by heart." Even if I'm it was so five years ago, and you only sent in one thing that I never read, I know you, and I friended you on purpose. But um, so yeah, I I was a it was a a monstrous. It, I mean, it, all in all, good came of it because there was a ton of people that didn't even know the show was back on. They're like, I only listened to you back when um the show was on. I'm like, the show's on. They're like, ah! And all of a sudden they loved it, loved it again, you know, and they were just thrilled, thrilled, as my daughter would say. But yeah, I'm a, I'm a Facebook. Oh, your Facebook. Uh, I guess. Did you change your picture to be of a, I a sexy shot of you? I there? should, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
die handsome. Go check out my webcam. Yeah, check out my I'm, pics. I'm, I'm looking for somebody to love me on you New seem Year's like a nice Eve. Guy. Yeah, yeah. You seem like a real <laughs> nice guy. I'm tired of all these weirdos on Facebook. Can you come and see? I, I'm shy, but I have some pics of me. The ones you requested. I always love that one. Yeah, because oh, yeah. I'm always <laughs> requesting pics. You know. Yeah, man. <laughs> of girls I don't know on Facebook. That only have one profile picture in their entire profile, but yeah. Anyway, all the girls' Facebook people are like, "What? We never get those." But <laughs> wow. anyway, so yeah, I'm an idiot. I'm a, girls get? a huge Facebook issues. But uh, hmm. John, what about you? <laughs> oh man, John just um, has few, huge face issues, but what? I have huge face issues. <laughs> yes, and I put them in a book. So that makes me, I don't know. Yeah, it's okay. Um, I took a trip up to West Virginia, mm-hmm. stalkers, uh, for the holidays. What's up Christmas. there? Stalkers. Oh. Actually, there's not a whole lot of stuff up there, but no. I was up there. And during our trip, of course, you always have to make that obligatory stop at the uh, rest stop so that you can empty the bladder and whatnot. Well, this is on the return trip, so it was, this is actually Saturday, day before New Year's, and um, and my son gets out of the car, and there's this this guy. He's emptying the trash cans, and he's you know he's a he's a good old boy. He's in North Carolina, and um, maybe I, I think he was you know he had all of his logic skills and whatnot, but he seemed to be a little slow in some some regards. Mm-hmm. But anyways, he was saying. He's talking to Johnny and stuff and saying Happy New Year and everything. And, and, and then he says, you know, most people don't pay attention to children, but I do. No. <laughs> <laughs> said, okay, we're going to get going here. Yeah, it's, <laughs> You pay attention to children at the rest area. That's a good uh, – yeah. that's a great thing. In his thing. defense, he worked there, but oh. he was just being friendly. But, yeah. <laughs> but I do. It's a good place to meet kids, I reckon, that you'll never see again. It's scarier than life. That is not in his defense. That is actually uh, <laughs> it's actually working against him right there. <laughs> but it was uh, it was it it was interesting. And of course, John, you know, when he hears something new, oh hey, somebody wished me happy New Year. So he decided that he needed to do that all the way up into the bathroom, wishing people in the bathroom a happy new year. Happy new year. Like, dude, he's just when you walk in the bathroom, you don't have to tell everybody anything. Just just go and do your stuff and and then but no, he's like people in the stalls, happy new year. Oh. <laughs> and and you know, the sad thing is that's pretty normal for, for little kids to do in the bathroom is to talk to you constantly and explain everything they're doing. Yeah. But yeah. But yesterday <laughs> last night at Panera, my little boy needed to go potty and it was one of these closet door type stalls where it's all the way from the oh, floor yeah. to the ceiling. And uh, and so I'm standing outside this closed door and these two cool looking thug dudes walk in and I'm just standing by the door looking at them. And one of them immediately turned around and walked out. And I wanted my son to say something. Dad, I'm pooping. You know, I, I, <laughs> I did a big one. You know, any embarrassing <laughs> comment would have been absolutely amazing. Uh, but uh, he didn't say anything. And I was just the idiot standing there <laughs> guarding, the, guarding the door. Yeah. So. <laughs> Doesn't work for me. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Let me just say, if you folks uh, in podcast world are not joining us for the live show, you are missing out because right now yeah. Ethan Nicole is drawing. Um, That's why I don't talk. This is why, yeah. And Ethan's drawing me being arrested on Facebook as my <laughs> Facebook profile. Now, because let me just. That's what's happening on the, the newspaper. Oh, that, reading, that John is reading, reading it, sitting on. John's the, reading about you being pooping on his <laughs> exercise ball. <laughs> on my exercise ball. But let me tell you this: don't feel left out if you can't join us for the live show. You absolutely cannot. Um, we always post the graphic, the finished drawing, the yeah, montage. It's just like one big giant drawing on the website, and uh, so it is the coolest thing ever. Go there, you know, you can you can see the link to the opening song, and and then also the the image that recaps basically the entire thing visually as well as the show that you're going to hear on your iPad. iPod. Uh, Ethan, what do you have uh, update wise? Um, uh, I okay. So for Christmas, I had to travel. A total of about 3,000 miles, and Goodness. I chose to do that by car. Wow. And uh, <laughs> so what I did, I drove 
I decided to leave at 2 in the morning one night and do an all-night drive because traffic's so bad down in L.A. Because mm-hmm. um, I, I, the main reason I was driving is so I could see multiple people because if I fly into one city, then I can only see one group of people, and I wanted to see my family in Coos Bay, which is on the coast in Oregon. I want to go up to uh, Portland and see my friends and get my new computer from my buddy who built it for me. Wow. And then go up to uh, Moses or up in, up in Washington where Malachi and my dad and them are. So I decided to drive, and so I'm driving about 2 in the morning, and I'm about 15, 20 minutes out of, out of L, or, uh, driving out of L.A. on the I-5. And so there's, like, road work going on. And they, they, you know, they have these cones set up saying, like, you know, four lanes closed up ahead. Aye. <laughs> and uh, they start, the, the lanes just keep getting closed, and, like, you just keep getting nudged over and over off the road by these cones. And there's cars ahead of me, cars behind me. We're going about 45, 55 miles an hour and, like, slowing down for the cones, but still going kind of fast. And uh, the cones eventually nudge us all the way off over the white line. Like, they're having us go over into the dangerous, you know, the crummy part of the road over there. I love how <laughs> the cones suddenly, have a personality now. They're forcing yeah, they're like, me. Kind of, <laughs> yeah. Stupid. They got, little, they got little shock sticks. They're, like, <laughs> shocking it. Move over. <laughs> So then suddenly I hit it. I hit a pothole. It has to be like, I mean, the size of a freaking, I don't know, what's a big negative space <laughs> analogy? Something uh, big. A crater. A crater. It's like a crater. It's a pot yeah. crater. Dude. My car, I felt like I thought I was in an accident for a second. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and immediately I can hear the sound of a, a completely torn open tire when my tires have been oh, ripped open. That hole must have been the size of... Uh... The hole in uh, John's friends list on Facebook. The size of God's nostril. Oh, oh wow. There Wait we a go. Sec. Hey, I don't want you calling those guys. Oh, sorry. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I pull over, and then I notice the guy ahead of me pulls over, the guy behind me pulls over, and suddenly, like, almost everybody in the traffic at the time pull over. Like, they had sent everybody through this giant pothole and torn all their tires off. Oh, open. my gosh. <laughs> nice. And it just kept happening as we're over there, like, changing our tires with our spare. We're just seeing people just pulling over and pulling over and people with emergency lights. It's just like tire pop apocalypse, um, <laughs> which is a weird word. Tire pop apocalypse. Wow. <laughs> tire pop apocalypse. <laughs> so that was the beginning of my trip. So then I find I, – I realize that I, I don't have a donut. I have a real tire in my, my spare. So I use that. So I'm like, I'm going to keep going on this trip. I'm not going home. So I, drive, I keep driving on the trip, and I, it's about 4 a.m., and I'm tired. I start getting real tired. I thought I had gotten a lot of sleep, so I'd be able to stay up all night, but I just was zonking out, so I pull over. I sleep for about an hour and a half, and when I wake up, suddenly I feel that feeling in the back of my throat. Like, oh. Sick, like that sick feeling, like you know it's Cold there, air. it's hit you. Yep. Dad, gum it. So I had about another uh, 10 hours to drive from that point, and by oh, the time man. I got, I finished my other 10 hours, I stopped and bought a new tire, so the overall drive, first drive, which is supposed to be a 14-hour drive, ended up being about 16 and a half hours. Oh, more. geez. And uh, I got home, and I was just totally sick by the time I got home. Mm. And then I opened my laptop up because I need to do a Bear-Mageddon page update. And my laptop I never use. I let my roommate use it all the time. So uh, I, hadn't, uh, I hadn't looked at it, and, and uh, I hadn't been on it for a month. I open it up, and there's no files. There's no programs. It's just empty. Like, there's nothing in there. Uh, and it turn, and then there's any time I try to get on the <laughs> internet, it's like Sri Lanka rentals, and like it just keeps redirecting me to all this spam. Yeah. So uh, he had uh, given me a, gift, a Christmas present on my laptop. <laughs> luckily, I figured out there was it was like a, a virus that hides all your files, and I was able to. They were all still there. So oh, good. It wasn't as bad as it looked, but I was freaking out. I'm like, I'm sick. I popped a tire. I'm already broke. You know, it was like <laughs> laptop. <laughs> it was a rough, Christmas. It was a rough trip up there. Yeah. <laughs> Your heart was growing two sizes too small. Yeah. <laughs> bah humbug. So yeah, that's my uh, that's my Christmas story. And, and then some. I mean, it got better after that. I I still had a good Christmas and it was fun. And you were visited by three um, Geek Squad members during the night, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> they, they helped. Well, my you buddy out. Anthony. Um, he he gave me this sweet machine. Mm. It's a, or he didn't give it to me. He ordered it for me. I paid for it. But he put it together. It's a, nice. I might have it's to, a dream. I might have to talk to your buddy for the next time because I heard three screens were involved 
<laughs> yeah, I have two screens, then I have my uh, Cintiq that I'm drawing oh, on. Oh, okay. I've only got two screens myself um, and no Cintiq, but uh, it is a dream. But I don't... And it's just fast as heck. It's like I got a solid state drive and uh, oh. like a, the Core i7 processor just flies. It's awesome. Ooh. I know. I know. Now I'm getting jealous. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, we got to mention that uh, the chat room. Chat room, thank you for joining us. You can join us every Tuesday night at uh, 9.30 p.m. Eastern, 6.30 p.m. Pacific. There's 22 folks in there now, and that's great because I didn't even tweet it. I forgot. <gasps> And it's been like three weeks since we did a show. So oh yeah, I, I tweeted. Thank you. Uh, but <laughs> Thanks, all the regulars Ethan are here: Nicole. Chicken Tuna, Daniel Lewis, J Man, Metal, Doctor J, Mister Jack, uh, Sideache, Angry Bird, Ramen Mouse. Uh, <laughs> Sideache, hey, <laughs> that's Cliff. That's funny. Cool. Your Blu-rays that you drew, yeah, that Sideache. That's him right there. Oh! I don't know if I don't know if Cliff saw that you. Uh, did I love? You mentioned his, I love my Blu-rays. Dad, come it. That is That's insane, awesome. people. That's full circle. I'm having like a little geek moment right now. <laughs> totally crazy. <laughs> Six degrees of separation and all that junk. Anyway, uh, so yeah. And as far as news goes, let's do some of that. News. I, I mentioned earlier I got a brand new show out. Let me do that real quick. It's a brand new show. It's a solo cast called Stuff I Wish I Could Say. And it's found at stuffiwishicouldsay.com. And uh, if you could spell all that, great. It's awesome, and you've passed the test to be able to listen to my show. Uh, it's, it's all the stuff that I wish I could say because I have a problem. And, I, and this should have been my weekly update, but I wanted to save it for this point right here. Even my announcement's a story on a storytelling show. Um, I have a problem, John. You know this, uh, but maybe you don't. I have a problem <laughs> with, with saying things um, that I don't need to say and, and trying to put right all the evils in the, wrong, in the wrongs in the world with my voice. Um, yeah. you, you guys will remember uh, the story of the guys that tried to spray us with water cannons, and, and I threw the Coke can at the side of their truck, and yeah. you know, I, just trying to fix it, and then throwing my keys at the old lady who flipped us the bird when we were picking up our dog. <laughs> you know, I, I always want to right the wrongs of the world, and, and I've decided I can't do that, but I still need an outlet or I'm going to go insane and start drawing pictures of traffic cones urging people off the road. And so... <laughs> Um, what I've done is started this podcast to talk to th people and to say the things that I'm not allowed to say. And it's not just a passive aggressive act. It's not a rant show. It's not where I'm just going to be like, this guy, he was mean to me at McDonald's and I hate him. So I'm too wimpy to talk to him. So I'm gonna... <laughs> it's not about that. We're going to be talking to things That's like, totally me. we're going to talk about things you can't talk to like babies and <laughs> wind chimes. Wind chimes. Yeah, I was going to be like, I was expecting just a totally racist show. <laughs> no, no, but Those darn toasters. But there, there are people and things that I've realized talking to them and talking and trying to explain it doesn't work. It it gets you in trouble. It it causes drama, and so it's not out of wimpiness or some sort of passive aggressiveness. There's just things that need to be said that I can't say. And, and it's not going to do any good, but I need that outlet. And that's what Stuff I Wish I Could Say is about. And I have a feeling there are people out there that are the same way. There are, a matter of fact, we've already had comments and emails sent in, and it's only the first show. And people are flooding my inbox with things that they want me to say on their behalf on the show um, about their <laughs> nice. stupid friends that do the same stupid things over and over. And, you know, and well, for instance, one of the things I'm, I talk about is, is, uh, is, is wind chimes. Why do we have wind chimes? Why do I need a reminder that the wind is constantly blowing outside? <laughs> That old controversy. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. It's, it's the oldest time itself. And I talk mm -hmm. about ninja bikers and uh, topic. Um, all kinds of <laughs> stuff. So you know what? Screw y'all. Um, <laughs> that's something that I needed to say, but couldn't. That's the second uh, time somebody's told me that today. <laughs> second. The first one was my wife. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't in a good way. But what I wanted to tell you was the story that happened today and, and why I need this show, because I haven't been doing it long enough to, to, for it to fill the void. The, we, every time I pick up my kids, we go by this middle school. And, um, and all these, I mean, the 400, you know, kids are walking home at the same time. And usually there's no problems. I, I always anticipate somebody's going to be a doofus wad, you know, or something. But, um, but I'm walking, I'm driving down and we're stopping in traffic and there's this group of young thugs and, and this little dude, this little white boy, he's just like 
pointing at the van in front of me like the and he's yelling at the driver just yelling and i'm like this guy is doing this to be macho and and tough and sure enough out of the side of my eye i see him start doing it to me and he's just like well, i can't even hear what he's saying but he's probably just saying something to make somebody laugh. you uh, you know i'm just imagining what he said you fat old man you know come on out of here in your dumb green truck and beat me up or whatever and um <laughs> so i couldn't help it i couldn't let him get away with it. I rolled down my window and I just said, your mom. And, <laughs> and his friends all go, I hear him say, what do you say? And his friends all go, he just said your mom. <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't do anything. It was awesome. But my daughter, I had explained it to her for half an hour why, you know, that was okay. And finally I just said, you know what? Daddy was wrong. It was mean. And, uh, but he started it. <laughs> So, yeah, that's why I need the show, so I don't have to say that. I can just talk about it later on, that's you know? Right. Little punks. You ain't nothing. <laughs> Beep. Yeah. Honk my horn at you. Because what, what are they going to do? The, you know, the game is in his favor. You know, I can't, I can't whoop him. I, a matter of fact, I did decide on the way home, I was like, if I'm ever going to go to jail for fighting a kid, if I ever got in a situation where my, you know, I just had to fight a kid, uh, like that, some eighth grade punk that's screaming at me and my kids. I would tell him, uh, I am going to bend you over my knee and I'm going to spank you until you cry. Because <laughs> that would be the most fulfilling thing ever is to turn that little brat back into a child like he should be. It, 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 do I get an amen anywhere in the audience? Because Amen. On a Lulu. If I'm going to go to jail, I'm not going to punch him. I'm not going to, you know, threaten him. I'm just going to grab him, bend him over my knee, and beat the tar out of him like old school. <laughs> and he, the good old and he will cry in front of his friends. I don't care if he's punching me, biting me, or whatever. I will have won that round and I will go to jail and I will tell Bubba and all his friends what happened and they will worship me as a God. <laughs> so. <laughs> Did I mention this is a Christmas show? Let's do some Christmas stuff. Okay. <laughs> Why don't we just do that? All right. Dang. Story. Before I get cold dropped off in my front door for being a bad Childhood. <laughs> but I decided I had it all planned out. I was going to record the whole thing because I even queued up my video recorder. I'm like, if he comes back, I'm going to tell him. I'm going to warn him. I'm going to be like, sir, if you do not walk away, I will bend you over my knee and I will whoop you like a bad baby. <laughs> and then there will be, and I said, there will be witnesses and, and in court, they will play my little iPhone video and they'll say, no, he, he told him. He told him he's going to beat him like a bad, bad donkey. You know? <laughs> so, anyway. Uh, let me kick off the Christmas spirit, right, and uh, tell you a little bit about, uh, about what I want to talk about. Christmas stories. My first one, it's not my Christmas story. It's actually somebody, one to somebody told me at church uh, the other day, and it's so classic. This, uh, this mom, she has five, six kids, uh, seventh one on the way. And um, these, the, I know it's like the, the Duggars. Duggars. It's like the Duggars, dude. They go to my <laughs> church, and they're great. The kids are awesome. They all look the same, and um, that's good. They're cute though. So if you're gonna have kids at all, you know, or like photocopies, um, at least have your original. You know, a cute kid. <laughs> yeah, if your first kid's <laughs> ugly, stop right there. <laughs> yeah, stop. <laughs> change your change your religion and start believing in birth control. But uh, anyway, so she she they do really well for themselves, and I'm like hats off, you know. If you've got money to raise your kids, and you got the attention span, and you know the abilities and all that, that's awesome. Um, so I got nothing against these folks; they're they're great and they're good parents and blah blah blah. Uh, and they listen to the show. If you can't tell, uh, no, <laughs> they. Uh, <laughs> she's cleaning her house for Christmas, man. Getting the house all ready to go. And she she goes in the boys' room, and you know there's like three little boys that share a bunk bed and a. And a and a you know a bed, and it smells like pee in there big time, Cr oh. Christmas pee, and Christmas pee. So, so she she said oh she's horrified just like any mother would be, <laughs> so she she strips the beds she's you know pulling the sheets she takes everything and she washes it she she takes and and, and steams <coughs> steams the mattresses steams. you know. And, and oh my sterilizes goodness. everything and gets on her hands. He smells the carpet, you know, no. And she puts everything back together. Everything smells fine. You know, it's two hours later. She's got everything great. She walks in the living room. 
oh god oh oh it smells like pee in the living room what in the world and she's about to unfurl her cleansing wrath upon the christmas room <laughs> cleansing wrath cleansing wrath and um and it just so happens she that she noticed the dog was next to her and she bends over and she smells oh the dog smells like pee <laughs> the dog had been following her around the whole time every room had been smelling like pee it's, and so it wasn't the boy's room at all. It was it was the dog. It was the dog. Okay, now you think the story's over. It's not. What? <laughs> the little girl. There's, they only have one little girl. The little girl says, you know why the dog smells like pee? And mom's like, I'm afraid to find oh, out. No. But why? She says, because Jeffrey peed on him. <laughs> one of the boys had peed on the dog. You think the story's over. It's not. <laughs> it's not. Why, Jeffrey, why did you pee on the dog? He peed on me. <laughs> <laughs> so I peed her back on you. <laughs> the logic of children, man. <laughs> yeah, it's good. <laughs> so I was like, that's what John was like when he was a kid, man. Oh, hey. I can just imagine. Except for farting. Except it was farting. I don't know the, yeah, I wonder how the dog reacted while it was being peed on. <laughs> I don't think dogs care. Apparently they don't. Unless he was trying to like lassie around the mom and say, so, yeah, I'd imagine in my dog peed on like, me. <laughs> Like I can't think my dog, and I didn't say lick, but like, probably would lick it. I can just imagine if you peed on Lassie, Lassie would go and, what? What, Lassie? Well, yeah, Did, I think their ears would perk up. Billy, and, Billy and peed on you? Can... Grandpa peed on you? What? Yeah. <laughs> what in the world? I don't know. I'm just thinking Lassie and Ren Tin Tin and all that stuff, you know, the oh, intelligent geez. dogs. You t you said you were talking about spanking an old fat guy, right, earlier? N no. <laughs> I was yeah. talking about <laughs> spanking a, a middle school kid. Uh, yeah, I misheard you, so I'm drawing you spanking a fat old guy right well, now. Well, you know. Uh, well, you did say I, I get he snippets. like a big get, old baby. I get distracted. It's okay. It was a thugged okay. little white boy, but that's okay. Well, I'll give him a sideways hat. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> fat old guy. All right, so who's got the next Christmas story? I've got one that's uh, current as of this year. Good. Um, as you know, that I have a difficult time telling my children the truth um, in regards to things, and it's starting to catch up with me. I told my son, my oldest, John, I said, you know what? I think we're just going to have to cancel Christmas. And he's, he's still up in the air about Santa Claus. You know, we haven't told him either way. He doesn't really believe in him, but he doesn't really not believe in him. So mm -hmm. I said, I'm going to call the Santa guy and tell him not to bring you guys any toys. And he got this look on his face. He's like, seriously? I said, yes, I'm serious. And he believes everything I say. <laughs> so the, later on at church that night, he was walking around to all his friends and said, my daddy canceled Santa Claus and <laughs> canceled Christmas. <laughs> And for everybody, ladies, <laughs> yeah. He, oh no! Him, Your Christmas is canceled because my daddy <laughs> said so. <laughs> he's telling everybody. And some one of the kids' parents walked to me and said, "So I understand that you've canceled Christmas." <laughs> oh. I'm not sure if they were congratulating me on, on the ability of doing that or if I was being scolded. But probably a bit um, of both. Yeah. Apparently, uh, my kid, he's a he's a parrot in all the wrong ways. Yes. 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 <laughs> Awesome. Christmas was almost canceled, but I told him that you know I'd, I'd read Cant and that's all right. It I, didn't make him be good or anything at all. I got a buddy, um, good friend at the church, and he's like rabidly against Santa Claus, but he doesn't care, you know, that that we do it at our house. He's he's just one of those you know guys that don't and doesn't think it's right to lie to your kid and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, oh yeah, whatever. We lie to our children constantly, you know. Um, but uh, he. Uh, he, 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 and I think I mentioned this the other day, maybe not, but his daughter and my daughter are best friends and they both debate Santa like at school, <laughs> like, like, to, like debate. a, like a Mormon and a Christian would debate like the topic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. dude. And they come Who back. Do you believe in Santa? <laughs> <laughs> and, like the, and my daughter doesn't just believe dude, like Calvinism versus Armenianism. She, yeah, she is a Santa Claus evangelist. I'm not even kidding. Oh. She's trying to convert kids at her school <laughs> to believe in Santa. Yeah, and she is seriously <laughs> worried because what I've told her, I'm like, some kids don't believe, and that's fine. But that just means they just don't get presents from Santa. And, and there's no worse thing in the planet she could think of. In life, that that yeah, you like so she wants to help these kids, these poor kids. So <laughs> you have to believe in him. 
You must believe. She, she tells more people about Santa than Jesus, <laughs> which is what I'm sure my friend is is happy about. But uh, when you die, you have a place in the North Pole. That's right. <laughs> uh, anyway, so they they talk and they come home and they and they compare notes and and that was one of the deals. Jenna says we decided whatever we say and whatever we come to, we come home and we talk to our parents about. It. I'm like, you guys are six years old, you know? How do you know to do this? But um, apparently, my 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 daughter says, uh, well, uh, Esther's dad says Santa Claus died because who's Saint Nick? <laughs> I'm like, well, he's a guy and 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 he died. He did die. That's what he's talking about. But he's Santa Claus, right? And I'm like, oh crap, you know, it's just getting too too deep. Santa theology sucks, you know. He is not the same yesterday, today, and forever. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So we we oh yeah. So he he uh he had to take a I had to go home and or church the next day or at work rather and say uh yeah what's the deal man Santa's dead. You, you kill Santa for my kid? What the heck? <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Oh, yeah, that's right. You might as well just tell her that Jesus is dead. And well, and then he well then he comes he comes up back right back at me and he's like, well, you know, your my daughter's mad at us and wanting to us to believe in Santa Claus. <laughs> so <laughs> so he thought it'd be really funny. Um, they spent the night over there, uh, a few of the girls uh, with his daughter, and and they made gingerbread houses and did all the the stuff. And she comes back talking about the cookie ninja. What, Daddy? Mm-hmm. Is the cookie ninja real? And I'm like, what the in the world ninja? are you talking about, cookie ninja? She says, yeah. Uh, J- her dad said that um, we don't put out cookies at our house because the cookie ninja will come and steal them. And I'm like, oh, great. Great. My daughter, who's scared to death of real Grinch um, you know, and, and, and everything else, you're going to plant cookie ninja you can't tell your kids about happy <laughs> santa great. claus but you're gonna tell your kids about some stinking cookie ninja so um yeah so cookie ninja is now in in, in the back of my kid's mind that that uh, but the see <laughs> my friend is dumb about santa and he doesn't know santa's favorite cookies santa's favorite cookies are sugar cookies oh. and uh yeah oh. sugar cookies but uh they are not a <laughs> chocolate chip and cookie ninja apparently only likes chocolate chips so we were able to save the day my wife, in her brilliant form, said, "We never put out chocolate chip cookies. Cookie Ninja wouldn't come anyway, even if he was real." So <laughs> nice, brilliant. So yeah. <laughs> Ethan, you got a Christmas story to bless us with, brother? Um, brother man. Well, I did. What's a good Christmas story? I know when I was, I think I was seven. Um, it was a really good Christmas. I was uh, very happy. I can't remember what I got. I think I got a hamster. I really wanted a hamster really badly. <laughs> and I was the one getting all the presents from the tree and bringing them to everybody. Yeah. Like, everybody sits in the room, and I'm like a little kid, you know. Yeah, you were and, playing Santa. That's what we Yeah, saying. I'm the one who goes, oh, this one's for Daddy, and walk over to him, and this one's for Mommy. <laughs> and then, like, so right towards the end, there was, like, one or two more Christmas presents right behind, like, directly behind the tree. And, uh, oh, there's some more back there. So I reach way back there. I'm all proud of myself because it's a long reach for my little short, stubby seven-year-old <laughs> arm. And I mean, uh, suddenly my finger, I feel like a horrible stinging feeling on oh. my finger. And I pull my hand out from behind the tree, and there's a bee on my finger. Oh, my like, gosh. Attacking me. <laughs> a bee attacked you? Like, ah, a bee! A bee! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it was my first bee sting ever in my life. And this cat, this, or this bee just decided on Christmas. On Christmas, he would... Stingy. Dude, That's I so should write a, a Christmas seven, song it's ter- ter- called terrifying. The Christmas Bee. It could be just, a, a new Christmas yeah, carol. There you go. The Christmas I Bee. I, the, I think I just accidentally said The Christmas Pee. I guess we'll hear that. If it's in the thing. <laughs> I think I did. It's because I'm looking at the drawing that I yeah. just did. <laughs> yeah, with the dog. The kid peeing on the kid dog. peeing in the dog's face. <laughs> All right, so my daughter um, got up Christmas morning at 3.30 a.m., and uh, she's so what? dang excited. 3.30 a.m. that morning. <laughs> I had just laid down. I had built a desk. I had put together two scooters. And we string lights, like, from their room all the way, you know, down the hall to the tree. And we string lights all over the house and, you know, stuff. Nice. Like, make it like Santa's been there. So, yeah, 3.30 in the morning, my daughter walks in. And she's like, it's 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 Christmas. And it's light outside. Get up. 
Shadow's been here. <laughs> and I look outside, dude. It's dark. It is darker than um uh than John Steinkleiber's hair dye. It is oh, it is dark. I don't dye my hair. No. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe it's Maybelline. Um, it's greasing formula. I hate him because he's beautiful. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> So uh, yeah, so I I had to I had to bed I had to get her you know come over here and lay down with me and the girl is like a friggin' worm she she moves around the whole time and <laughs> so I didn't even sleep Christmas Eve it was terrible oh man and you had to did you did your church have service the next no on Christmas no thank God really yes I much prefer this church your church canceled <laughs> Christmas on Jesus's birthday yes Amen yes Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah to you. Yeah, I think a lot of churches did that. That's glory. I, glory. That's hilarious. Glory did you go to God. a church on Sunday morning? Yeah. No, I didn't. Seven years ago, I did when I and I was sick as a dog too, man. That was terrible. <laughs> Christmas on Sunday. Whenever they had it last funny? time. It's Jesus' birthday. Everybody goes to church. Man. Yeah. No. We all go the night before. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I told. I wrote another Christmas story and told it, and the kids, you know, kids loved it. This one had over forty illustrations. It was a beast. Um, well, so I'm gonna try to get this one published because this one was written after I uh, I read Save the Cat. So thanks to there you go. So it made it a 20 minute story instead of what should have been a 10 minute story. But that's another <laughs> story yeah. altogether. Every plot point in there. Okay, so um, have you guys ever heard of Elf on the Shelf? Yeah. Okay. John, I've heard of elves and shelves, but I'm not. Well, John, <laughs> John, do me a favor and tell everybody about the Elf on the Shelf thing that is done. Okay. The Elf on the Shelf is actually a, a book. About an elf that um, he 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 kind of spies on you for Santa. Yes. And so he you know sends notes back to Santa and stuff like that. And well, he has a he companion. Tells on you. Yeah. If you're, well, you're bad. If you're good or bad, you know he he's he's Santa's eyes on the ground, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's like a Santa snitch. Yeah. Yeah. He is. He's Santa's soul pigeon. Soul pigeon. That okay. makes sense. Yeah, it's from the old day. See. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, he uh, they, it comes with a companion toy. It's a little elf, and um, and what you do is you put him around the house. Certain, you know, like in the morning he'll be on the bookshelf, and then the next morning he'll be in the pantry, and it's kind of like a game for yeah. the kids to kind of find the elf on the shelf. And and sometimes and he does naughty thing. things, like he gets into stuff, and there's evidence that he's he's you know uh, some fam- families do it this way, where he's he's taking the DVDs out of the DVD cases, or he got into Daddy's <laughs> change drawer, or he's he's he smoking peed, weed he peed on the dog. <laughs> yeah, he peed on the dog. He peed on the dog. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. So it's it, you know different families do it different way, but the point is, yeah, every day he's done something during the night, and he's just this still little stuffed creature. Well, I've seen him. I've seen him, and and for the life of me, for a long time, I've seen him in other houses. I didn't know. That that's what the deal was. I only found this out this year that he had a yeah. purpose, and it really troubled me. You know why? Not because it's cute, not because it's fun. It's because we had one, so and he toy? never <laughs> did anything. Yeah, yeah, he's a okay. toy. My mom yeah. was either so sorry that she never moved him and did anything or told us the legend, or two, she was so dang overly religious that my grandma had it. <laughs> And wouldn't let Grandma tell us or play the game with us. And I was so mad. So. <laughs> I only heard about him the last couple years. Right. Is he really that old? Yeah. The, the, the character? Yes. Elf on the shelf. I'm somebody, learned, right somebody found out how to make money off is what they did. But those little wow. elves have been around forever. Oh, it's like a little boy. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people say he looks like my son, James. He does. Well, my son, James, looks like the elf on the shelf. Yeah. Whichever came first. I don't Can't know. Can't tell. So that's all my Christmas stories. If does anybody else have any? Because I'm about to bust out the guitar or no, some email. Uh, I put a potato in my little brother's stocking when I was a kid, <laughs> <laughs> and it totally ruined his Christmas. Oh. <laughs> like, I thought it would be funny. I just thought it'd be funny. Like though, because remember the old saying, like Santa gives you a rotten potato if you're bad. No, it's coal. But you're from a different part of the country, so yeah. So I've heard that before. Like it gives you a rotten potato. <laughs> really, that's yeah, that's a man, that's mean. But so I just put a a fresh potato. I think I was like twelve or something. <laughs> I put it in there, and he's opened his stocking, and that potato ruined his Christmas. Like he it cried it. The whole oh my day. goodness! I felt pretty bad. Like I wasn't. I didn't think he'd take it that hard. Dang. <laughs> I I have something that ruined my Christmas. Oh, I, I do too. It? I do too. You go ahead. You first. Okay, I'll share this. When I was. 
Uh, Let's see who's five. the worst. Okay, go. Going on six. My mom had to go to the hospital mm. to bring into this world another present. Aww. A new baby sister. And so my grandparents had the charge duty of taking care of us that Christmas. And so Christmas morning we wake up. Mom's not there. She's at the hospital. I didn't even know where she was. Um, I remember her being pregnant and all that stuff. But, you know, I didn't know all about that stuff. Anyways, Grandma and Grandpa are there, and I'm like, well, what are we going to do for Christmas? And and they said, well, we're going to do Christmas with you. And it was me and my older sister and my younger sister. And we so we started opening presents. And I wanted to be helpful and, and be Santa-like. And so I, I was helping my youngest sister, who was two at the time or something like that, and um, almost three. And, and I was helping her open her presents. And I get picked up, and I get a spanking. <gasps> From my grandma and oh grandpa. Oh my gosh! One on of them. Christmas, and I'm like, well, "What are you doing? <laughs> it's Christmas. You don't spank me. You need to let her open her own gift." <gasps> I was like, "Oh my gosh! Why? Wow! <laughs> I got yeah. spanking from my grandparents for Christmas." Yeah, grandparents had that about them. Man, they could be the nicest, and then they could just go all psycho on you. Yeah, crazy grandparents. Old people, man. <laughs> <laughs> They spanked me like a big old baby. <laughs> like a baby thug boy. I stopped like a, talking like trash. Fat that old day. guy with a sideways. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay. That was my tough Let me see if mine mine can beat that. Um all right, we got up early on Christmas morning and um we were unwrapping presents and uh I, I knew this gift was gonna be like the special one. I, I, I kinda knew what it was and it was it was supposed to be very, very awesome. And as I, I peel back the paper, I died. So <laughs> that was pretty bad. That was like the worst Christmas ever. I like freaking that killed does, over. That trumps mine. No, hmm. I told you guys about the worst Christmas ever. It was an episode. So I'm trying not to yeah. rehash that story where we had to give most of our presents away to a poor family. Actually, no, scrap that. To a family that my mom assumed was poor because of their race. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So go back and listen to that one, folks. Go in the archives and look up for the best Christmas ever if you want to see, uh, if you want to be amazed that I do comedy. <laughs> Instead of like, I hate my life. Everything is terrible. Yeah. He does emo comedy. <laughs> All I remember are the words. Uh, we, we were, it, it just went somewhere. Let me do an audio drama. Oh, wow. A remote control car. I've always wanted one of these. Thanks, Dad, that has never, ever ad admitted that we even existed. And for the first time, you've come and brought presents to us. And then, goodbye, Dad. All right, wrap them up. What? That's the way it was. That was my mom's voice. Wrap them up. Wrap them up. We're taking them. I'm only letting you keep them. He's trying to buy your affections. So, <laughs> ouch. Yeah. Uh, let me uh, <laughs> let me read some stuff. We got a long show, Sorry, but it's all right. People haven't uh, <laughs> people haven't heard from us for a while, so I think they're they're more likely to listen to a longer show. Greetings, James, John, and Ethan. This story is very funny, mainly because it only happened an email. minutes ago. He says it happened minutes ago, but I shall go against better judgment and tell it anyway. First, I'd like to say I don't get embarrassed easily, but this time I did. So this was after our annual Christmas play. I had to go punch a mean grumpy. I was in the... <laughs> <laughs> punch a mean grumpy. <laughs> I've it's, always heard bust a grumpy. It's, it's a Christmas tradition. And, uh, <laughs> Wait, are we thinking of the same thing? Yeah. Thinking of dump? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I was in the bathroom. Fucking out a dirt snake. Unloading. <laughs> I was in the bathroom unloading when a little kid walks in. I knew something funny was about to happen because I thought about how um, – because, first of all, the bathroom stank to high heaven. And I remembered how you guys talked about the two awkward moments when you accidentally make eye contact through the crack in the stall. <laughs> 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 and, uh, yes, I expected the little boy to glance through the crack. But when he stopped – when he walked by, he stopped and stared. <laughs> <laughs> it's my son. <laughs> Happy New Year. <laughs> hey, you. Happy New Year. North Carolina. <laughs> it felt like a few minutes had gone by. So I just waved at him and said, not everybody notices the children. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I, do. I said, hi. And then he goes off to the sink and starts washing his hands and singing, do, 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 do. <laughs> 
He walked out, and I couldn't hold it in. I burst out laughing. If you read this, I hope it makes you laugh. I know John will. <laughs> Praise <laughs> Howard. Hallelujah. Jay Ferris. P.S. Stop calling me Ferris. Well, I don't know what your dumb name is. <laughs> People love it when I butcher their names, so I don't even care. <laughs> Two years ago for Christmas, me and my cousin got bird guns from my mom. I'm assuming that's bird guns, or unless there's some word, B-E-R-G. But bird guns. Berg. I don't know. Being 10 years Mossberg. old. Maybe. <laughs> Shotgun. <laughs> maybe. Being 10 years old, of course, we were uh, going to use them. Christmas Day was terrible. Everywhere I went, I was being shot at. I started not to care until my cousin got me in my own room and wouldn't let me go out of the room to pee. I'm assuming BB guns or something. Yeah, B-E-B-E. -B -E. I don't know. I kept complaining he wouldn't let me leave. After a few minutes of that, he got annoyed and just started shooting me. One of his bullets hit me right in the eye. It's lucky it didn't do any damage, but I think I may have been legally blind in my left eye for a few minutes. Thanks for reading this. I love the show. I've been listening since Moving Mom. That's pretty, fairly recent, actually. Whoa. And lastly, oh, I, th yeah. I think that when you get to episode 200, you should have a two-hour extended show. Hey, why wait for that? We're about to do that now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll just label this right? one 200 and go back and do the others. No, we're not. We're, we're almost at an hour now, so we're doing better than I thought. Long live Nobody's Listening. That comes to us from Bart. So thanks, Bart. Thanks for being a listener. Got a couple of voicemails. Uh, ENV mail. Thank yeah. you for calling. I didn't play that before, so I figured I'd play it now. Here it goes. Do it. <laughs> hey, James, John, and newcomer Ethan. Um, uh, hi. Here we go. Uh, Ethan, meet Emma. She's been with us a long time. Hi, Emma. Hi. She has. <laughs> Best Christmas tradition ever. We light a fire every Christmas Eve. Merry Christmas. Happy what? New Year. What? This yeah. <laughs> exactly. There you go. Meet, meet Emma. Wait, did I miss something? No, you did not. <laughs> Is this no, nope. wow. they light a fire on Christmas Eve. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but it's, <laughs> it's who they light on fire. At Christmas. That's Eve, what I was gonna say. I was looking for our <laughs> chaos sound. You know, the screams and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> I can't find it. I wanted to play it and play her laugh again, but <laughs> we light a fire. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, <laughs> she's homeschooled. She can't help it. No, we we love Emma. In a very Emma. in a very safe way. Uh, <laughs> scary though. What do you think Emma lit on fire? Send your emails to James at NLCast.com and we'll we'll listen to them on the show. Top ten no, things no. that Emma's family burns on Christmas. That would be an awesome top ten list, people. You could make it, it happen. Would be. Do it. <laughs> do it. Uh, this is uh from um, the family dog. One of our listeners' dads. So listen up. Hey James. This is uh, Drew's dad from the west side of Mars, and I'm calling for nobody's listening. Um, I was just catching up and going back in time, and I actually went back and listened to NL, or Nobody's Listening and, uh, and uh, Geek Loves Nerd kind of in sequence with each other. So I'm just catching up. It's taking me a while. And I was listening to Jeez, episode cool. 160 today, and near the end of episode 160, John breaks some really bad news to you, and he lets you know that... Um, that what you thought was one of David's jokes all along uh, was really lyrics from a song by Randy Newman that uh, short people got no reason to live yeah. was you know his song and you seem kind of disappointed to discover that that maybe that your brother hadn't always given you original material. Mm -hmm. um, I think I might have some more bad news for you. Um, it seems that for a number of years there's been a syndicated morning radio show called the Ace and TJ Show. Um, I wouldn't say I'd have been a fan of it, but I did listen to it for a little while on and off when it was the only thing on the radio. And for a, a very long time, uh, that show has, um, well, when callers call in, the, uh, if the caller wants to remain anonymous on the show, they refer to that caller as Anonymous Lucy. <gasps> Maybe it's just a coincidence. Somehow I doubt it. I don't know where Lucy 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, and, and worse yet, that's also the same show where I ever heard um, a group use a recap song. Mm. Now, they did those weekly. And probably this is some kind of parallel coincidence that, uh, <laughs> that, that, that these ideas uh, came from, from your brother and were also from that radio show. Uh, I'm calling the SWAT team anyway, now to take care of Mr. Cover. I, I haven't shattered too many um, illusions of your brother there for you, but... Oh. And maybe I'm completely off base here. That's that's probably it. I'm probably probably completely <laughs> off base. I love the show, man. I've enjoyed catching up on it. Uh, I think you do a great job, <laughs> and uh, it's great fun. Take care. Uh, well, I, you know, hey, he, James. Oh, hey, buddy, a destroyer of dreams. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you plagiarizer, <laughs> something. Uh, things. Well, you, you know, people wonder why David's not on the show anymore. It's because <laughs> you got fired. David was full of crap. No. <laughs> <laughs> David's, John, David's, all, all of David's he jokes. Wasn't even really, really your brother was from a morning <laughs> show. Actually, you know what? He, he he had a different dad than I did. So there you go. Oh, see, there, there it is. is. Now, um, uh, you know, you might be right about the Lucy thing. You may be absolutely correct. But the recap song was my idea, and I hadn't heard about that from anywhere. So, speaking of which, one more Christmas update for me. I forgot <laughs> in my in my Christmas story that I told on Christmas Eve to the kids. Uh, there was a joke that the main kid character has where he says, you know, I hate the Christmas Eve service. You know, Mary and Joseph, they've made that trip so many times and they never, you know, you'd think that once they'd call ahead and get a room, you know, or something like that. And um, <laughs> so that was just a little joke for the for the people. And uh, somebody comes up to me Sunday uh, with Family Circus comic and, and Bill Keen had made the same joke um, <laughs> in there. But mine was written a month earlier and probably so was his, but... It was awesome. My, I'm, I'm funny enough to be in the comics and didn't even know it. So, <laughs> not, not that Family Circus is is breaking any 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 uh, records on on humor, but I used to love Family Circus, especially when Billy would take over and draw. It's my favorite stuff. That was good <laughs> stuff. Yep. All right, it's time for a recap song. Let's do one quick. Ow. Dun, 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 All right. Dun, dun, so we need a. Cr- I, I don't know. A, I don't know where John's going to take us, but John, at some point Ooh. in there, we've got to try to do a Christmas song. Um, about what was it again? Uh, peeing on the dog. Peeing on the, the dog. No, no, Christmas bee. Yeah, Christmas, Christmas bee. bee. Christmas bee. Oh, there. Christmas bee. Yeah, I'll, I'll, your, Christmas I'll bee. start with that. <laughs> There's your visual for it. Oh, Christmas bee. Oh, Christmas bee. How lovely is your stinger? <laughs> I was seven years old. I was feeling real bold. And you stuck me through the finger You hurt me bad so deep inside And now my finger made me cry Oh, Christmas be Oh, Christmas be How lovely is your stinger <laughs> Nicely done. <laughs> Why did you sting me on Christmas, Christmas be? Why did the you bridge. sting me? Oh, I wish I had a family that would burn things <laughs> like our Christmas tree. But give a <laughs> like Emma's burning stuff. Yeah, Emma's family burns stuff. Emma's family ain't getting bitten their, by no Christmas bee. They burn their Christmas tree. That's what That's I'm right. depicting here. Right. Maybe they well, maybe they deal with the cookie ninja. While wearing hooded cowls. That's what well, <laughs> if you don't believe in Santa, I'm so cool with that. Don't be telling my child like she's a little brat that there's a cookie ninja that'll sneak inside and steal all the cookies while he tries to hide. Cause I can hear him chomping, I can hear him giggling. Tell her about the cookie zombie or the cookie pirate. I'm so okay with that stuff, it's alright with me. You don't tell her about the Chinese martial artist sneaking in behind my Christmas tree. Ninja, stay away. Go jump in your black ninja sleigh. Do not come.
come inside today Santa will hurt you And ninja eyes you too ninja Cookie eyes. Ninja, there's nothing for you here So don't you set a single black ninja tear Just go away and never come back again What about the uh, the dog, the Christmas dog who got got whizzed for Christmas? <laughs> <sighs> okay. His name was Sparky. My name is Sparky. I'm a dog, <laughs> and I love Christmas time. I love all the children, and I think of them as mine. I would protect them from anything, especially Bear Mageddon. But there's one boy named Jeffrey that I won't be forgetting. Yeah. <laughs> that boy has kicked me more times than a dog should be kicked. And I, he has licked me one more time than a dog should be licked. And I'm not real picky about anything like that but once i'd had enough and i peed on that boy square and flat um <laughs> christmas dog oh christmas dog why did you pee upon my son oh christmas dog oh christmas dog why did you pee upon him yeah. it's because he peed upon my back he did it first, I cannot laugh. Oh, Christmas mom, oh, Christmas mom, your son has beat on me first. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. <laughs> One more? Okay, okay. Um, oh, oh. Is there anything I've forgotten to draw? I gotta sing about Emma. I gotta sing about Emma. Sing about Emma. Well, every that Christmas we like to wear our robes and gather round the tree and burn that beast. Everything about the family says scream. We even wear the masks around our Christmas tree. And as it burns, we sing our Christmas carols backwards and call up evil spirits from the netherworld. It's the least we can do because Christmas was created by pagans, tree-loving pagans. So we bring it in our house and we burn that monkey down. We burn that monkey down. We don't even smell like ashes because the snakes we're carrying protect us. <laughs> And don't get me started on that elf in the shelf. I hate that guy. My grandma was too good and she didn't tell the lie. Daddy, every day he would do something different because my mom told her not to. And I missed out on something magical about Christmas. Besides the great spirit of giving that my mom made us do that one time when my dad brought presents over for the first time in my entire life and she made us pack them up as soon as he left and give them to a poor family that she thought was poor even though they had a two-story house and they had really nice clothes. She did it just because they were black. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. Thank you, folks. Thank you. And with that, and with that, and that alone, we say goodnight to all of our wonderful listeners out there. You know the website, <laughs> podcast.nanocast.com. Email us uh, with your, your rebuttals, your concerns about uh, John's finger butt, james at <laughs> nlcast.com. You can call them in and be ridiculed and mocked, 2095 NLCast. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter, slash NLCast for both of those. Join us for a live show Tuesday nights at 9.30. <laughs> Uh, and watch Ethan draw amazing, amazing things. Truly, I cannot overstate how awesome it is. And uh, and seeing John bouncing on his little exercise ball. I keep forgetting there's a camera on me. Yeah, it's okay. It makes people seasick, though. I'm just telling you. It's that 3D thing. Um, check out all of the NLCast podcasts, including the brand new show called Stuff I Wish I Could Say. You can check all those shows out at NLCast.com. Thanks to our sponsors, Rob Gobers for our theme music, Spouses for letting us record, except for Ethan's non-existent spouse that we're praying in through sheer in faith uh, and contributions to uh, you know other evangelists and stuff. Um, <laughs> thanks for our contributors and everyone who listens. And remember, when you tell a funny life story, tell it like nobody's listening. We'll see you guys later. Peace.
<laughs> uh, yeah, the dog whizzed. <laughs> Can I need one more thing?